Hi, my name is Mike Clark, and today we're going to show you how to laser engrave photos on glass. Doing this technique is actually quite easy. It's not hard to do as long as you follow a couple of important steps. If you do this, you will have a lot of success engraving photos on glass. Traditionally, laser engraving photos on glass wasn't easy. In the old days, this was, this was a technique that a lot of people just didn't even try. And those that tried did be, didn't meet with a lot of success. About eight to 10 years ago, I got frustrated with, with having issues with laser engraving photos. I came up with this technique and for the most part, it makes it a lot easier for me to get proper results when I want to etch an actual photo on glass. The secret to this is using a mask. The mask I normally use is transfer tape. You'll typically see this tape used a lot when you want to apply vinyl letters or when somebody wants to etch into a piece of material and then paint fill it after. Or maybe you'll use this to protect the material that you cut and then just peel it off and you won't have any discoloration or burning on the etch. The nice thing about this material is that it's water soluble so it allows me to etch the photo and then basically all I have to do is place it under water and the mask will come off. I know a lot of suppliers will talk about using wet newspaper uh, and, and this technique will work. Um, this wet newspaper presents a couple of problems. Uh, one is what's wet and which newspaper are you going to use? Uh, certainly the newspaper from five to ten years ago is a lot different than the newspaper that we see nowadays um, in terms of the print. Um, again, the problem when you don't know what wet is and you don't know what the newspaper is, it's hard to get consistent results. And this is really the most important uh, technique that you, that you need to get right. You need to get this consistent so that when we pick a power and speed, it's always going to be the same. If I use the transfer tape, it's always the same tape. I don't have to wet it, so it's always the same power and speed. I don't have to guess at anything. All I really need to be concerned about is getting a proper photo. The other problem with paper is that, is where wet newspaper, is that typically what happens is the exhaust will dry the paper out and suck off the newspaper off the actual uh, product that, on the glass that you're working with. Some people usually suggest maybe putting some soap on there, but hey, for, for me that's A, a lot of extra work, and B, it doesn't really work too well because a lot of times if you're doing a really large photo, then it doesn't work. This is the photo that we're going to work with today. And what you'll see on this photo is that I've got a nice portrait here with minimal background, and it's, this is going to be actually fairly easy for me to reproduce in Corel Draw. This was a photo that was given to me by a dealer in New York State uh, who, had had, who was having some issues uh, with doing photos and again the problem was they weren't using the mask. Uh, you can't use plain glass. You can if you want. <clears throat> the, the, the thing with, with um, with, with using masks because it just gives us a finer detail, uh, gives us um, a more smooth etch. We don't have as much fracturing on the glass. So we get a lot more detail that we see with the actual photograph that you won't get when you just bare, uh, bare engrave into glass without a mask. So the, the tick, trick to this is twofold. One is make the proper corrections in Corel Draw, and most importantly, use the transfer tape. If you use the transfer tape, the results that you'll get with doing photographs will be a lot higher in terms of the percentage of getting a good looking photograph. Take a look at the two images on the screen. You'll notice that one has been laser engraved with a transfer mask, which is the image on the left. The image on the right has been laser engraved with no mask. Thus we've engraved directly onto the glass with the laser machine. You notice that the masked image, the one on the left, is a lot cleaner and shows a lot more detail than the non-masked image. The non-masked image tends to be bolder and a lot of the fine details are actually absent compared to the masked image. This image shows that when we use a mask, we get a lot more detail. 
This detail we will need when we want to laser engrave photographs. Thus, when we want to do photographs, we want to use a mask. If you take a look at the two photographs on the screen, you notice that the image on the left has been laser engraved using a transfer mask. The image on the right has been laser engraved with no mask and therefore has been laser engraved directly on the glass. The image on the left shows a lot more detail than the image on the right. You can see the outline of the legs, you can see the creases in the dress, and you can see good detail in the body and the face. The non-masked image, a lot of these, this detail is absent in the photograph. You can see that the mask has provided a lot more detail in the photograph. The image on the right, in a lot of cases, would be unacceptable for most people in terms of supplying a finished product. Thus, to get a good quality image, we need to use a transfer mask. In this example, we're going to place transfer mask on the glass. I've got some glass here. I've got some transfer mask. I've got X-Acto knife and I've got a piece of plastic to help smooth out the So first off, let's, you get the glass set up on our table and we're going to take the roll of transfer mask and I'm going to roll it out. Get it started. And then typically what I like to do is just put the first little piece on top of the table. This allows me to pull the mask without having it pull off the table. I push the glass up against the mask and now I'm just rolling the mask out. I'm going to take my piece of plastic and I'm going to pull towards me and then this will adhere the mask to the actual glass itself. As you're doing it, be careful that you're not getting creases in the actual mask. If you do, just lift the mask up and then re reapply it. This is a medium tack mask and it will come off fairly easy. Take the X-Acto knife, make a cut, and then don't worry about the excess that's on the actual glass. So I'm just going to cut it off with the X-Acto knife. I've turned it upside down. I'm going to make a quick cut and I'll make another quick cut on the other side. And I've got my glass ready to send on the laser machine. Now, if you do happen to have a couple of bubbles, um, which maybe we'll find once we smooth out the actual mask, you can see there's a couple of small bubbles there. Just take your X-Acto knife and prick the bubble. So there's a little bit of a hole made. And then just take our hard piece of plastic, smooth it out, the bubbles typically will go away. So there you have it. Our mask is on the glass. I can now place this on the laser machine. The above image shows my finished image. As you can see, I have an excellent looking photograph done on glass. I've spray painted the MDF background of the picture frame black just to allow the photo to stand out a little bit better. Even though I've done this, the image still looks good even by itself.
So remember, if you want to get really good looking photos on glass, you need to use a transfer mask. This mask is available at most suppliers of plastic materials and vinyl signage. Just ask for a vinyl transfer mask and make sure that it's medium tack. So let's take a look at how we process our photo in Corel Draw. I have my photo opened up in Corel, and my first step is to get rid of the background. I typically like to get rid of the background when I'm working on wood or marble or glass. A background in a photograph tends to take the focus away from the individuals or images that we want to basically isolate with our photo. In this case, I've got a black background with the balance beam in the back, and I want to get rid of those. Typically, I get rid of any background in Photo Paint, and that's easy to transfer image from Corel Draw to Photo Paint to make the necessary changes. To do so, I need to come over to my photograph, right click on it, and say Edit Bitmap. By editing the bitmap, it actually opens up in Photo Paint and allows me now to be able to cut away the background. To do this, I'm going to go up to Image and select Cutout Lab. Now what I want to do is I want to have a nib size. In this case, the nib size is a circle that's on the screen, and it's a pretty good size. Uh, notice here that it's set to 100. Uh, if I want, if I go to, say, 125, I'll get a little bit bigger nib size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my line here halfway on the photo part that I want to keep and half off of what I want to get rid of. And we're going to go all the way around. So basically what the, the, this tool is doing is it's basically going to take a look at this photograph and it's going to sample the photograph and it's going to keep whatever falls on the inside of the photo, what I've highlighted, and it's going to get rid of what's on the outside of the line here. So I'm just going to typically go along, halfway on, I'm across, I'm done. Now, CorelDRAW needs to know what part of the photo I want to keep, and I do that by going to the Fill Tool, and I can either select the outside or the inside. In the case, this case, I want to keep the inside, so I'm going to click inside, and the area that's filled tells the, photograph, tells the software that this is the part of the photograph that I want to keep. So we're going to go to Preview, and notice that I've got rid of most of the background. Now if I want, you notice here that I've lost some of the photographs, so I'm going to just zoom out a little bit. I'm going to sort of bring some of the detail back that I've lost. So I'm going to click on the Add Detail tool, and that's going to allow me just to bring back some of the areas that I have lost. You can see by the transparent background that it's actually disappearing, which means now I'm bringing back the full photograph. And you can see I've lost a little bit of her hair here. So let's bring that back. Press the H allows me to use the hand tool to move. Let's go back to the add detail. See, I'm bringing back the detail of her body. Notice here I want to get rid of this area here. So again, I'm going to select this subtract detail, and this allows me now to get rid of some of the issues that may happen here. And I can add back the detail that came out. just so you can see that it's fairly quick that I can actually get rid of the background and any detail that I lose I can easily bring that back let's get rid of the bottom of this chair here Need that the H tool, come down to her feet here, and we want to keep 
this detail. And let's get rid of the let's put the bottom here. Let's lost a little bit of the toe here. Let's bring that back. Now we'll move around. There's a little bit more that we've lost. So you can see it's a, it, it takes a little bit of time to sort of get these edges of the photograph brought back to the way they're supposed to be. But it doesn't take that long. And the rewards are going to be a lot better because now we've gotten rid of that black background, which we really don't want to have. Because really I have to invert the image. And because I have to invert the image, I want a nice transparent background. I suggest if you want a little bit more detailed explanation on this tool, I have a couple of good tutorials on my website, Engrave at engrave.ca. Uh, there actually is a good video, too, separate video that talks about the Cutout Lab in CorelDRAW. So there I've got my image, and if I zoom back out again, you'll notice now that I've got a good facsimile of just my image and the background's on. I can click the OK button and my image is processed and then basically all I need to do now is go file save and once I go save that image goes back to CorelDRAW. So I can close down PhotoPaint and you'll see I've got my image here now in CorelDRAW. The background is, is transparent which is perfect and now all I need to do is to take that photograph and do a couple of processes on it and we'll get it ready to engrave on the glass. So I need to select the photograph. First thing I'm going to do is go to Effects. Let's go to Effects, go to Adjust, let's go to Contrast Enhancement. Typically what I want to do on this one here is I want to, uh, let's just reset this. I've got a lot of white here. Uh, I've got a little bit of black and I've got sort of an increasing um, amount of gray that happens here. So again, if I pull this slider this way, I'll lighten it up a little bit. Typically, I want to lighten it up. I want to get a, a little bit more dark. And again, we can adjust the gamma a little bit here just to sort of shift our, our histogram either left or right depending on whether you want to darken the image up. You can see that this is the preview here, or this is the original image here, and then this is the preview of what our adjustment's going to be. I like to have a little bit of a lighter image because the the, the dots that are in in the photograph um, they'll become a lot bigger in CorelDRAW when we or on the laser when we actually etch it on the glass. So I want to sort of generate a little bit more white versus dark uh, areas between uh, in my image. This tricks my eye into seeing more detail. So all I need to do now is say OK. Let's just bring that up so we can see OK. Sorry, my next is to go to bitmap, down to sharpen, unsharp mask. So you can see I've got my image on the right here, on my left is my original image, on my right is my previewed image. Normally on, in the Unchart mask, I want to normally slide the percentage to 500. Let's just zoom in a little bit on that so we can see it. It look, doesn't look as so, um, so bad if we zoom in on it as opposed to when we're zoomed out on it. Normally my radius, I normally want to get that up around you know, 8 or 10 uh, is pretty good. I say OK. My next step then is to go to um, my effects, go to transform, I'm going to invert the colors because I want to I want to sort of do this photograph in a negative. 
uh, not a positive. So a negative image is the way you want to do it on glass. My next step then is just to go to mode, convert to black and white. I'm going to use either Jarvis Stuckey or Floyd Steinberg. Say OK. There's my image there. And then basically all I need to do now is just send it over to the laser machine. So that's basically all I have to do when I'm converting my image in CorelDRAW to make it ready to laser engrave.